So I've been using this Amazfit BIP S for a few days now and in this video I will talk about both the pros and cons and if you should buy it or not covering almost all the important stuff. So guys if you are new to the channel subscribe and also like this video. Let's begin. Now let's start with some of the cons first for a change. So the first one has to be the design. I mean look at these bezels, they are quite big guys. I mean most of the fitness watches in this price range kind of have slightly slimmer bezels and better looks. It could have looked a bit more modern. The second one has to be the screen resolution. I mean they could have bumped up the screen resolution to make it a bit more sharper. It's a minor gripe but we'll talk more on that display later. The next one is about the notifications, I mean there is no real improvement here, they could have added the emoticon support but it's not here so after these many years they could have done it. So they added these uh, home screen shortcuts, so let's call it a control center for convenience but the thing is it is redundant, I mean you have the music player here as you can see but if you swipe to the left you will also get the music player. So I don't know why they added music player there because they could have added something more useful like alarm or reminders or something different. Another thing in the menu is when you swipe to the left you will find these things these are called home screen shortcuts. The problem is these are not customizable I mean you can only change the order of these but you cannot really add other things for example like let's say stopwatch or alarms I would say it's a bit of lazy effort on the UI designs part. Now this is debatable but I don't like this new look of the menu in the form of this list sort of thing. I mean I like the old sort of uh, big icons but it's a personal preference so I leave it at that. Another problem is with regards to the watch faces. On this Amazfit app you don't really have this local watch faces tab that you find on the Mifit app where you can actually store the watch faces and use them whenever you want to sync them. but here it's a little bit different and it is not as intuitive as the Mifid app but yes you can still load watch faces, third party ones for sure. So now let's talk about the pros or things that I like about this Amazfit BIP S. The original BIP did not have a great display, yes it was very good in terms of sunlight visibility but the sharpness and the way the colors look. It wasn't that good and you can see that it is reflected in the ratings. But despite the same resolution on the BIP S, definitely the overall panel is improved and uh, I did actually show this in my Amazfit BIP versus BIP S comparison, you can check that out, I'll leave a card here. So the display isn't all that bad now. Yes it's a transflective display so you do get that always on display as well which is very good and the sunlight visibility is just excellent. So the next one is the performance. I know it's a fitness watch not a smartphone but who likes a choppy and laggy interface. I mean I've seen a lot of wearables under 5000 rupees that kind of do not have that fluid interface which is not the case here and uh, the UI feels very responsive and fluid so I really love this about it. Now there are also some under the hood improvements like Bluetooth 5 better IP rating and Sony's new GPS chip. So yes finally you can take this out for swimming so that's really great news. Also the new GPS chip is definitely faster in terms of GPS lock times and also it is kind of a little bit lighter on the battery as well. And finally we also have the music player controls so that is really nice. So in terms of health tracking I find the step counting and the heart rate sensor to be fairly accurate with a decent sleep tracking as well. I know you still cannot track those afternoon naps which is a downside. Also don't expect too much or high accuracy when you are talking about distance or the calories burned which is the case with most of the budget wearables out there. They do have this new personal activity intelligence which requires you to enable continuous heart rate monitoring. It does offer some insights and motivates you to do more workouts but I would say it's more of a motivator and not a typical feature that I would buy this for. Now talking about the battery life, as you can see here it is at about 71% even after 4 days of usage and the continuous heart rate monitoring was on and with these settings and with minimum notifications 
I was able to get this kind of battery life. So, so even with a bit of heavy usage, you can get anything around one week to 10 days of battery life, which is really excellent. And if you don't use the continuous sorted monitor, then you might expect even more. So that is simply the best in this class. So considering all the pros and cons, I would say this is definitely worth buying and I'll drop a link in the description. You may consider buying from my affiliate links as it does help the channel. So that's been it guys. I hope you found this video helpful and also like this video, subscribe. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.